Welcome to the show, everybody. It's the Crypto Lark. This is going to be our Friday news roundup. Today, we're talking about WePower, Bancor, Lisk, Arc, and Bitcoin Cash, all of that, and so much more. After a quick shout out to everyone who's been hitting that like button, and of course, everyone who's been subscribing to the channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you hit that button down below to stay up to date with all of the latest in the crypto space. Furthermore, this is, of course, not professional financial advice. This is just a dude talking about cryptocurrencies on the internet. Let's have a quick start off with the market. Oh, it's red. It's a red day. And then turn green again. Oh my gosh. No, there's uh, recovery is struggling a little bit. Obviously, we're still so far away from those recent highs that we had only a few weeks ago. But thank goodness we're not down anywhere near as far as we once were. I'm cool with the markets today. Let's go on to our first news story. 80-year-old Singaporean Bitcoin investor goes on cryptocurrency-only vacation in Australia. I love this guy. He's awesome. He paid for everything. Flights, uh, airport transfers, hotels, the works, everything in cryptocurrency. He left his fiat and left his credit cards at home and went all crypto. My hat's off to that man. And 80 years old. Who says cryptocurrencies are only for the young people? That guy's a boss. Over in Venezuela... Government orders services to accept any cryptocurrency. Wow. Consular services all the way down to gas stations. I have this feeling like Nicolas Maduro is now like the biggest fan of cryptocurrency. They had their, I think, the pre-sale for the Petro um, cryptocurrency and they raised like $725 million dollars. And he's like, wow, cryptocurrencies, this is cool. Let's get some more of this. Interesting turn of events in Venezuela. And obviously, they've been cracking down on cryptocurrencies for quite a while. I hope this isn't another situation where it's the elites can have it, but everybody else cannot. Hopefully, they make some more positive moves in Venezuela. But I think we have a new, a new cryptocurrency fan in the president of Venezuela. I wanted to point out some interesting statistics from the doc.io ICO. Now they're going to be having a, an airdrop coming up for whitelisted people who couldn't participate, but that's not the interesting thing. Their statistics on security blow my mind. Now they did what they see as being pretty gosh darn good that only 0.7% of the total they were trying to raise was lost to scammers. The industry average is 10%. So if you have a, a, a sale trying to raise $30 million, they're likely to lose $3 million, at least, to hackers and scammers. They had zero data breaches. They banned more than 1,500 impersonators on Telegram. Crazy. They had 30-plus cloned websites taken down. Eight Ethereum addresses flagged and 10 plus email phishing campaigns. This is happening with almost every ICO. And now look, doc.io was a very popular and highly anticipated ICO, but it's happening with all of them. Unimaginable statistics. Stay safe out there, guys. Speaking of lack of security, titanium. Titanium, I, I, blown away. I have no idea how they got hacked. They lost 16 million of their own tokens, basically their entire personal reserve, everything for the team, the advisors, the company reserve, 16 million bar were stolen. I have no idea how such gross negligence could happen. Get a ledger, man. <laughs> what? You've got millions of dollars in tokens. Have a multi-signature wallet. This was an obvious lack of best practices by the Titanium team. I think this really hurts the project. Now look, they've gone on to fork the code and they're issuing a new token to everyone in order to recover their own tokens and it's a mess. It makes me really think if you're going to be offering, you know, blockchain infrastructure services and saying, well, hey, we're going to be a secure service that you can use. If you can't secure your own funds, how can you propose to do it for others? The Binance Community Coin vote is going on again costs 0.1 BNB to participate. You can vote for as many coins as you want, but you can only vote once. The current winner, WePower, but Elastos, oh, Elastos, isn't a close second. 
personally, I would like to see either of those listed. Zillica too would be a great choice, but it's only down at 16.27%. I really feel this is a, a two-horse race at the moment between Elastos and WePower. Still a couple days to go. Elastos might come back, but WePower's got a strong lead at the moment. Part of the reason might be the Binance bounty. There's actually a couple of the coins that are on the community vote this month that are doing this. They're actually paying you to go and vote. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong by the rules with this but it's happening that's a thing now that's probably going to start happening on more of the community coin votes moving forward we power has been named one of the top 10 most innovative energy companies in the world that's awesome really great to see such high level recognition for we power i think they have a great project and of course moving forward with good developments they've been doing a lot of meetings this week nick's been over in brussels meeting with the European Commission. A Norwegian energy company has come to visit them and to talk to them. Interesting. Now look, that is not, neither of these things is, well, that's a partnership. They're just talking to people. But that shows that, hey, the European Commission's interested. Hey, other power operators around Europe are interested as well. Moving on to Bancor. Bancor progress update has a lot of exciting news on it. 42 tokens now on Bancor, which is fantastic. EOS partnership. This is big. One of the things that they want to do at Bancor originally was cross-chain liquidity. They're partnering with Block One in order to make sure that this is going to be happening for the EOS blockchain. So this is scheduled for release in June, of course, right along with EOS when it launches. Low cost liquidity for EOS. I'm pretty excited about that. That's pretty cool. And finally, some updates from the roadmap as well. Now, moving forward here, there are a couple very exciting things to keep an eye on for Bancor. This right here, Fiat integration. Cool. That, I think, is probably the most exciting thing on here, without a doubt. But also that cross-blockchain support coming quarter two, 2019. Of course, I assume that's for other blockchains uh, outside of the uh, EOS blockchain, of course, but pretty cool nevertheless. And they've also been working on getting gas fees down. In fact, they've got gas fees down by 80%. Cool. On to Lisk. Lisk has relaunched. Finally! Oh my goodness, this took forever. Now, what did we get out of our relaunch? Still the same name. We've got a new logo, though. That's cool. I like the new logo, actually. I think it's much more professional looking than the last one. Did we need to have a relaunch event for that? Did we have to have an announcement about an announcement that there was going to be an announcement for a relaunch event about that? Potentially not, but that's what we got. I like the logo, though. It's cool. We also have a new website to match that new logo. Again, looking very slick. They even made a pretty cool trailer, to be honest. I'll leave you guys to come over here and watch this, but to be fair, it's kind of cheesy, but I kind of like their trailer. Okay, but some more serious things that did come out of this. Lisk is going to be starting what's called the Lisk Vault. So this is going to help to fund new projects coming to Lisk. They're also looking at something called the Blockchain Academy, which is pretty cool. So they're trying to get people to figure out how to use this tech in a fruitful way, really to help try and attract new users, to get people to come over and say, hey, you guys can build on our blockchain. That's cool. Moving on to our good friends over at Arc. Arc Symphony High Performance PHP Framework for Web Development. The guys over at ARC are some seriously hardworking dudes. They are always bringing out uh, just tons of new tools to be used. This just adds to their huge list already of different uh, frameworks and things that they have available. They also have a new desktop wallet coming up. Nice to see, of course. And the ACES guys have complete integration of Ethereum channels for two-way transfers and contact contract deployment services. Cool. So this allows you to send 
from ARC via ACES through Ethereum. That's pretty cool. And of course, they have some nice commentary here about the possibility for basically push button blockchains and the ease of ICO launching on the ARC blockchain. Bitcoin Cash Time. Bitcoin Cash has created a point of sale device. This will let people pay with Bitcoin Cash at the tap of a button. I guess that's kind of cool. I don't see why you couldn't just uh, send Bitcoin Cash from one wallet to another, but nevertheless, it's a pretty cool thing. I think they'll probably, some retailers will definitely be interested in doing that. Probably these guys will be. The $100 million Bitcoin Cash Luxury Resort in Antigua. Now this luxury resort will only be accepting Bitcoin Cash. Curious. Very, very curious. I'm sure they'll be using the point of sale systems. On to some lighter hearted news about Bitcoin Cash. They have eat bitcoin cash no do not try to eat your computer or do not print out a paper wallet and then eat that that's not the point guys the people over at bitcoin cash have been putting together a charity fund to uh, feed people in venezuela actually now look that is a great thing to do and i you know definitely salute them for doing that they're not the only cryptocurrency project that is active particularly in venezuela with uh, different charity uh, events i know the guys at smart cash and dash have also been quite operational there but it's nice to see a bitcoin cash is also hopping onto that train now next week our community coin vote we have quash cash quash cash theta polymath and deep brain chain currently deep brain brain chain is kicking some butt but polymath is in a close second i will have the link down below make sure you vote and that will be our community coin review of the week next week this week, we are giving away two quantum to one lucky winner. Who is it going to be? Quantum, 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 says SZJack007. I hope I got your name even close to right, dude. But you got two quantum coming your way. Next week, we are giving away 0.1 Ethereum. If you want to be in to win that, pop your address in down below. Long live blockchain. And peace out till next time.